What's up and welcome to Cleats to Whistle podcast. My name is Brad Valdez and I am your host and this is the first official podcast. Very excited to have Dante Ellison here from J-Town High School. It's the second year actually coaching. So you want to go over your record real quick? Oh uh, man, our record we won nothing to go over, but you know, <laughs> unfortunately last year we went uh 0 and 10, you know, started off slow, but towards the end of the year we picked up a little pace, but you know, ready ready for this second year, ready, excited, you know, on this beautiful day out here spring practice, getting ready, getting yep. better. Day 3. Yes sir. Day 3, I seen I was just out here checking them out. It's actually they actually had some good numbers. Uh, I think we were you 26. I'm like it. Okay, know, to, okay. That's what I'm saying. At least you got a quarterback. Hey, you got a quarterback, you know. Thank, <laughs> thank, thank the Lord. So, this is for me to introduce Dante to you guys. This is going to be a quick one. This is probably only about 15 minutes, but like I say, this is this is the icebreaker episodes. Once we get into the season, we're actually going to have these guys out more often on, on, on the podcast. So, I'm very excited. We got some questions for him. But the first one is, are you from Louisville? I am. Born and raised. Born and raised. What high school did you go to? The Great Male High School. The Male High School. He's a bulldog. Yep. Dang, that's what's up. Um, and did you play Little League? I played Little League. I played for the Southern Trojans for Coach T um, for the first few years. And then towards the end, still played for Coach T, but we transitioned to the Highview Mustangs. Nice. We only lost like, you know. Three or four games. Easy, you know, easy. Brag, you know. He's the big dog around here. <laughs> Any accolades for you as as a player? Uh, at Mayo, um, all district um, as a outside linebacker slash DN. Uh, my junior, my junior year, all district. Uh, yeah, all district. There we go, boys. There we go. Any any uh, special moments that you that you remember while you were playing? Um, and male, I mean, there's a, I mean, there's a, a countless one. One that comes off the top of my head was, um, junior year, um, was able to, uh, you know, I was a big boy. I wasn't as big as I am now, but <laughs> back, you know, I was on the front line, uh, punt, we got the punt blocked. I was able to scoop it up, you know, almost, almost took it back to the crib. Um, another one would be, um, junior year versus Madison Southern. We went against, um, we got an old lineman's name that ended up playing for UK and ended up starting in the NFL. We, I, you know, I ended up having like three or four sacks versus him. You know, there we go, there we go. So we are here with Dante Ellison, J Town head coach. So we have we have a few questions, and and the first one is too is, did your number represent anything meaningful to you? Uh. My number, you know, male. We had a hundred some kids, so you kind of, uh, you kind of had to get what number that you, you know, whatever number was given to you was given to you. Some people got special numbers. I was able to get number ninety two. Um, number ninety two special to me because of Jerron Curse, the freak for the Titans, my favorite team. There you go. That's what I saw. That's why I wanted wanted to em- emulate. Nice, nice. So now you guys know what his number meant to him. Also, actually, you just said what position you played, but but just go over again what you play. Um, and male, I played DN slash outside linebacker. We had we had a hybrid defense. So okay, some plays I was standing up. Some plays I was my hand on the ground getting after the quarterback. Nice. So and did you did you actually take your talents to college or did you just go to college and just? Um, I play. You know, I had a little sip in uh sip in college. I kind of walked on at WKU. Um, got hurt. Then I realized that. My goal was to actually become a coach that I am now. Become a coach and be a teacher. I knew I, I wanted to mentor kids that was like me, um, so pivoted in that direction. Yeah, and then what, what's like your – what's now see, in, in Louisville, like where I'm from, we, we don't have it, but like you have ECE, you have BD, you have – and all these – like I'm, I'm not in the school, but what the what does all those letters mean? Um, ECE is for the um, the kids that um, have special needs. So some kids have um, special needs um, all together with their um, cognitive skills. Some of them are BD, whereas um, behavior. Some have you know they a lot of them um, with behavior they have a heart. They this have different different struggles. Um, so there's different very variations of it. What I teach, I'm a resource teacher. So resource classrooms are um, smaller, like ten kids in a, in a classroom, and a lot of those kids have deficiencies in reading, writing, or math. So we just give them um, extra services one on one, 
teach the same content as a gen ed teacher. They just get um, smaller classrooms, um, more help. Nice, nice. Yeah, because I, I don't know if you know that I, I grew up with like uh, like I don't I, I don't know like uh, learning disabilities. That's what right. I used to have. So I, right. I used to I man I used to be horrible at school. Right. I actually I actually hated school. Right. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's cool because I actually I actually had some of those classes too. You know what I mean? As as, right. as because I needed that little right. bit of extra extra one on one help. Yes, that's extra what, help. Yeah, that's the, that's the biggest um, disclaimer on if you're in one of those classes, you're dumb or something like that. And that's not that's not the truth. Some people you, you just need a little bit more help. The smaller the classroom, the more help that the, yeah. teacher, the yep. teacher can give. Totally agree. Totally agree, man. Great answer, and that's what he is. He's He's a classy guy. I've actually coached with him two seasons ago at DOS. Me and him hung out for man for the whole the whole season. I oh, think the whole season. We had the D line and O line going. <laughs> oh crazy. man! All I remember him is saying, "Grab grass, yep. grab grass." You still say that? Yep. You know, <laughs> they ain't grabbing grass yet, but you know, hopefully, hopefully, we get to that point. <laughs> oh man! So yeah, man. I just you know I wanted to come on here and 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 share your story. You know what I mean? That's cool that you're. ECE, B, you know, BD teacher, you're helping kids, you know, and, and you kind of understand, you you know, if they need help, especially right. on a football field. Right. You know what I mean? Having that patience. Because right. I know you do have a lot of patience because right. when we are coached, you know what I mean, we just we sat there and like, what the hell? You know what right. I mean? Right, right, right. right. <laughs> I, I, I exude the same patience that my mother and my coaches gave me because I was a kid that needed patience. I was not a kid that was just – it didn't come – some stuff came easy, but when it came to a lot of stuff, especially inside school, my mother had to come, you know, do a lot of pop-up sessions with me. So I want to give that same that same love, care that the people before me uh, gave. Yeah, man, that's awesome. That's awesome, dude. But but with that being said, do you have any, any mentors you actually want to shout out? Oh, I got a list of them. The, from the from the coaching side is uh, Coach Walker. He gave me my first response, uh, my first job as a coach, twenty two years old, fresh out of college, yeah. knowing what I wanted to do, didn't know how to do it. So uh, Coach Walker's been he's been a father to me, a father like figure to me since I was four or five years old. Me and his son grew up grew up together. So forever, forever full forever being Coach Walker's debt. Uh, yeah. Coach, Coach Crow to this day, I can call Coach Coach Crow. Talk about my marriage life, my school life. Gives me um, any gives me infinite amount of uh, knowledge. Uh, Coach Stenham, Coach Stenham, coached with me. He won all these rings at Central. Coach yep, Stenham was yep. actually the one that for real locked me in with t- uh, with coaching, telling me, giving me the advice that I needed, giving me the courage that I needed. You know, Coach Abel over over at, over at Fern Creek, Coach Williams over. At PRP, I, I'm lucky and blessed that I've bounced around a few, but I've taken something from every coach, and including the great Coach Redmond that coached me over at Mel. You know, that's one yep. thing. One yep. thing I was taught is to take the good and the bad from all the coaches that you have, and then you know, you'll be the best you. Yeah, exactly. That's a, that's a great answer, man, and that's good. You know, I don't know all those coaches, but I know I know most of them. But I know I know. I'm gonna hear um, what's his name? The Atherton uh, Walker. 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 I, I'm, I'm probably gonna hear his name a, a, a few times yeah, uh, yeah. while I'm doing some interviews. Yeah, Walker been coaching since the Stone Age. So, <laughs> you know, he, 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 done, he done coached a lot of us. Yeah, and and how he was over at Atherton for years, wasn't he? He was over at Atherton, I think, uh, 13 years. Uh, before that, he was at he was at Shawnee for a few years. So he was at Shawnee, um, was the head coach, then left, went to Atherton for. 12, 13 years, then he ended up at Shawnee, and now he's living the good, you know, f- retired football life. So he can, yep, yep. You know, he can come in the stands and, you know, be be an All-American coach. <laughs> so shout out to Walker. Yes, I know. And then Crow and all them guys. Man, it's, it's just uh, – man, that, that's that's a that's a really good list, another, man. Another, another person I <laughs> cannot forget to shout out is um, he's not a football guy, but Coach Britt over at Western, my guy, like – Started teaching together the same year. Um, the stuff that he taught me whenever we was at um, Iroquois girls basketball, because I was a girls basketball coach. Um, the stuff that he taught me how to relate to kids, how to um, meet them at their level, I will forever be uh, grateful for. Because sometimes it's it's hard to – sometimes it's easy to just worry about the X's and O's and, and to forget, 
you know, who the who the who the kid is. So, you know, shout out to Britt. That's why Britt's doing great things at Western. Yes, yes. Actually I do want to get him on the pod. I actually I actually sent the email over to Jared and he didn't get back with oh, me, yeah, man. I can, yeah, I can hook up I can hook you up with So Britt, I'm gonna have to know. do that. Britt, man, Britt, yeah, one of the best basketball coaches here in Louisville, man. I go we go to well, you see me at yeah. where I always see you at Western. Yeah, you know, gotta support the guys. But yeah, Britt Britt's one of one. Definitely one of one. Yeah, I met him one time when we were over at at Iroquois when I was with uh, Chris. Yep. Yep, he was in there. He was going to be the wide receiver coach. Mm-hmm. And But, yeah, that's good shit, man. Good stuff. Yeah, shout out, Walker. Shout out, Britt. But with you with you struggling last year here right. um, and, and, and the stress that you feel as a head coach, you know, what did you do to, like, release, like – like just to release your brain, man, and not have to take all that pressure on you. Uh, one, my faith. You know, I, I'm a very uh, God-like man. I always put God first, and so I, I, I always think that I'm here for a reason. So if that reason is to help these young men grow into something, then that's what my purpose is. You know, the wins are going to come regardless. Um, so that, so that was that was the number one thing. Um, second thing is just knowing my just my wife. Um, me not wanting to bring stress to home to her to you know mess up our household was just a big a big key thing um for her and just her just talking to me her just speaking life into me her uh, her telling me that I'm doing it I'm doing it for something bigger than just wins so you know that was a big thing but for stressful leave it's just for real just um just the grind just the just the just the anticipation of not knowing I mean, just knowing that last season every loss was a was a learning experience. Exactly. You know, yep. yep. And knowing that you know we're gonna we're in a valley now, but you know, Lord willing, we'll be out the valley. Yeah, that's a great answer. Great answer. I know because I know you got got huddle hours. You know what I mean. I know you're on the on the huddle grind. So right. that that's got to be stressful too. <laughs> and what are so what are you are the head coach right. but are you are are you calling anything are you calling offense defense um last year last year i caught a little bit of both just to um just because i have a very young had a very young staff um so i didn't want to put too much stress on them and at the end of the day my name's in the newspaper i'm the one that's going to get killed killed out so with us with us struggling i didn't want to have any arrows and bullets thrown at someone gotcha that just wasn't ready for it um, yep. this year coming up um i won't be calling defense but i'll be calling offense and hopefully um with the with the staff that i put in hopefully i can relinquish those responsibilities to someone like coach walker and coach crow and the ones before me relinquished and give them an opportunity to shine and um you know for them to see their hard work pay off also yep yep good answer man and then and going into that now how how do you feel about your staff this year? How how is how is it constructed? How do you uh, feel about it? You guys you feel more like glued, yeah, like more definitely, gelled? Definitely, I I definitely feel like I definitely the work the work that we put in during the off season. You know, if you, if you if you're a coach, you know about the Glazer Clinic grind. We was we was up and down the highways at these clinics to get to get better and just forming a brotherhood. Just sitting back um, and seeing. All the good things, all the good things that we did, and trying to build on that, and yep. then the bad things that we did. You know, a lot of a lot of the mistakes that we did was because I was a young, dumb head coach, um, and I take and I take full responsibility for it. Um, so I had to look myself in the mirror first, um, and then once I did that, I was able to see. You know, we should have done this. We should have done that. I should have. I should have put this kid in this position and that kid in that that position. Um, yep. and I think a lot. A lot of. A lot of just um, man hours, you know, on the whiteboard, you know, simplifying things and making sure the the head dog knows all the way down to our managers know what the expectation is going to be. Nice, nice. Good answer. I actually was over here enjoying this. So we are here at J-Town High School right here. This is Dante Ellison. He's the head coach. Uh, very good interview so far, man. Uh, make sure you comment, like, subscribe, uh, and just hit that bell, man. Make sure you get our, our videos every time we upload. We've got a couple more questions. So with that, what's your what, what's your hobbies outside of outside of uh, football? 
uh, hobbies outside of football. <laughs> ain't, yeah. a, ain't a lot, but you know, I mean, a lot of times it's whatever my wife tells me my my hobbies is. But uh, but I just I just I'm a I'm a really a homebody. You know, I love being at home. Love watching TV. Love watching a good movie. Um, clearly, as you can tell by my stomach, I love eating, <laughs> eating good. So you know, any good restaurants, you can you know, whenever you whenever you comment, comment a good restaurant so I can go to it. Um, but that's really just it. I'm really low key. I did I did a lot of stuff in my 20s. Now I'm in my 30s. I think I've I think I've you know hit my stride of just you know just just loving the just loving the house that that I have and just loving being at home. I hear you. I hear you, man. But yeah, I'm just, I'm basically the same as you, man. I'm, I'm a homebody. Uh, I, I'm not a construction guy. Are you a construction oh, guy? No, I no, can't, no. Man. I can't even, <laughs> I can't even drill a screw in. I, you know. <laughs> I, I'm the same way. My wife does everything. Right. Yeah. So, so uh, if you ever, if you ever come over and you see all my house, how nah, it is, it's because of my yeah, wife. My wife. Yeah. You can, <laughs> hey, man. I, I do. I do like to garden. That's one thing I did do during, during COVID It stayed with me at, that's another thing that for real during, uh, during football season that I was able to tap into was, you know, grow tomatoes, grow onions, grow, grow different type of peppers. I, like that, that's kind of just being out in the garden. This is like a guy know, green thumb right hey, here. You know, as I, I can't if I can't hang no pictures, I can you know I can plant some plant some flowers. <laughs> All right, so we are almost wrapping up. This is Dante Ellison, J Town head coach here in Louisville, Kentucky. It's been a great interview, but the the final question is, how do you see your team this year? Like like the pieces that you have, and 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 the and the offense defense you're running. Do you see your key players? You see all that. Um, I, I, I definitely see more success than we had last year. Um, you know, I, I'm not, I'm not so much focused on the wins. I'm more so focused on just the ex execution. If we can execute yeah. our core five plays, our core five run plays, if we, if we understand what we're supposed to do on, on defense, then the wins will come to where they are. A lot of our, we only, we graduated, um, three to four seniors last year, so our entire team's back. So, you know, one year older, one more mature, one more uh, year of football underneath their belt, and I think our kids are hungry. I think the one thing that got me more excited was last year our kids never got discouraged by by the losses that, 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 that we had, and by the end of the year we was getting better um, – and it started in January. Kids were showing up to, to lifting. They was ready. Coach, when we going to do this? Coach, coach, when we do this? this? They was tapped in on a whole new level because they understood that we didn't meet expectation and they want to set a new standard. Good, good, good. Yeah, and that's 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 an awesome answer. And, and you got a group, great group of kids. You know what I mean? I've seen, like, your receivers are over there just, just hanging out. Cause they, do they have a, a, a coach? Yeah, they got a coach. He's not here. Coach Coach Collins. He's um he's actually an umpire, so he was not. He was oh, not okay. Today, there we yeah, go. There know. we go. I, I've seen some kids standing around, but I was like, man, what the heck's going nah, on? Yeah, they. Yeah, you know, they they their coach their coach just wasn't here, but you know, they, Collins would be here if you if you would have came tomorrow, you would have seen him running around, you know, like a wild banshee, like he usually is. Coach Collins is a high energy guy. Love love him. You know, wish he was here, but you know, ain't gonna stop nobody getting him. That's it, man. So this is Dante Ellison, J Town head coach, and and the reason why I'm I'm coming here and interviewing in Dante is because the 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 behind the scenes that you guys don't see, like you said, they were here in January. You know what I mean? This 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 high school football stuff is it, it's minimal pay, but a lot of us don't do it for the pay. We just do it for the love of the game, and we know it's it's something bigger than us that we're that we're trying to do well, sir it's all about it's all about giving back to what was given to us that's why i always say my coaches gave gave to me so i think it's my responsibility to give back to the guys that i'm getting keep this football thing going i know football's underneath football's under attack for several different reasons yeah. um so you know it's always good you know if we everyone loves saturdays and sunday football but you know you got to do the little league football and the high school football first yep and this was a great interview. I want to say thank you very much, Dante, for, for just coming out or letting me come out and do it here on your football field. Um, but like I said, the, the work behind the behind the scenes with these guys do, it, it, it's, it's amazing. And, and like I say, they just do it for a bigger purpose. And Dante Ellison, Jefferson Town, right? Jefferson Town? Uh, 
uh, we could, yeah, Jefferson Town, J Town, J Town, yeah. the town. That's where we. That's the what town. We're gonna go by, you know. The town. <laughs> okay, so Dante Ellison from J Town High School, the head coach here. Uh, best of luck. You're actually gonna be seeing him a lot more uh, on the podcast. Uh, I got big things coming, so we're gonna have a J Town week where you can meet some players. Uh, oh, or oh, as a matter of fact, do you have a couple players that you want to just spotlight real quick? Uh, I mean, if if you if you come to any of our games, you're gonna notice two behemoths of kids: the Lucas Lucas and Cam McDaniel's. They're both you know six five, six six, massive kids. You know, luckily luckily to have them out because they because they was basketball kids. You know, we had to. Tell them, you know, y'all can't dribble with your left hand, so you might as well come out here and catch, <laughs> catch a few balls. So, you know, uh, Lucas um, has a few D1 offers, so he, he'll be someone that you see um, on Saturdays. Cam could also potentially be that. You know, Cam is Cam is a true du- uh, dual sport athlete um, that if he wants to play basketball in college, he'll play basketball. If he wants to play football in college, he'll play football. Um uh, we got Ladarian Smith. Ladarian is another um, solid, 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 solid kid. Uh, they they can blossom to something. Uh, Joe Joe Bell. Uh, Joe Bell is one of our big big nasties up front. Um, we got a bunch. We got there's a lot there's a lot of there's a lot of kids that we have that um, haven't been tapped into because of our struggles. But I feel like this year they're going to be put on the map. There we go, Dante Allison. J-Town head coach, you'll be hearing from him soon and often. I appreciate you, brother. Thank you. All right, well, and we'll be back. And listen, make sure you comment, like, and subscribe to the YouTube channel and Cleats to Whistle podcast. Here we go. That's it, man.